Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll give our attention again to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 11. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Dear brothers and sisters, What's the most challenging thing about coming to church on a Sunday morning? It's been 10 months since we moved from our 10 a.m. to 9 a.m. schedule. I know not everybody's a, a fan of that. Um, and for some of us, getting up and, and dressed and having breakfast and coming here, uh, isn't the easiest thing to do, nine o'clock. But I think there's all sorts of things that can make it challenging to walk through those doors. So for example, what if you were to, to get up, get dressed, get here, uh, on time, five minutes early, everything's in order, and then you come up to the door and there's a sign taped to it that says, no baggage allowed. Obviously not referring to diaper bags and purses. Figurative baggage. So, translation. Please don't join us unless you have your act together. We are never going to put a sign like that on our door. And God forbid that any of us ever give even the slightest hint that that's an unwritten rule. But people can still feel that way. You, know, you glance around the room and you see all these other people that, that have their, their lives basically in order. But the thing is, you can see beneath your own exterior and you've got baggage. And, and you can't get past the thought that, that everybody else can just see right through you. Think of the, the departures drop off at the airport. All the different kinds of people you see and the kinds of luggage that they're bringing in. Same thing outside the church doors. All different kinds of people with all different kinds of baggage. There's the, there's the long and heavy burlap sack that you sling over your shoulder. It's filled with with shame from your past. And you've learned the hard way that there aren't any do-overs in life. And it's like you, you feel like you're just dragging around a pile of bricks everywhere you go, that big dragging behind you, always getting caught on the corners, wearing out your soul. There's more kinds of baggage. There's, there's the the retail like fancy bag that's that's filled with with all the, the goodies from the, the fancy airport hotel or airport shop. But that bag might as well it might as well have a skull and crossbones poison sign on the outside of it. It's it's filled with coping mechanisms. Or to be frank, we could just call them what they are, addictions. And for the longest time you thought that you were in control of it. And now, even though you wouldn't admit it to anybody else, you know that those things control you. And then, then one last example, there's, there's the baggage without the bag. 
You've seen the people at the airport that are walking around with a cup of coffee in one hand, a, a bagel and a boarding pass in the other hand, and their phone uh, pinched between their ear and their shoulder. You're, you're juggling a life that's more than you can juggle, and you're losing control, and it's falling apart. So to, to trudge into church, trying to drag all that baggage and the whole time to pretend that it's not there and that you have your life all put together like everybody else, you just don't have the strength to do that every Sunday. So please remember, we don't have and will never have a sign on our front door that says, no baggage allowed. And, and thank God that, that his requirements for admission are the total opposite of that. Jesus does not say, come to me, all you who have your act together. He doesn't say, away from me, you who are weary and burdened. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. If you're weak and heavy laden, then I'm your guy. And Jesus knew what he was talking about. Remember, remember John the Baptist? John the Baptist, he was, he was the guy that when he was still a baby in his mommy's tummy, when he heard that Jesus was going to be born, he leaped for joy. And then he grew up into that fiery preacher of repentance who stood up against the religious establishment in the wilderness and prepared the way for the Lord. Well, John, at the time that Jesus speaks these words, John hasn't been preaching much lately because his preaching got him thrown into a dungeon You know what you can do in a dungeon? You can think. You have lots of time to think. And, and, and John was, was thinking about his doubts. He sent some of his friends who visited him in prison to go to Jesus and ask him, are you really the one? Because it really doesn't seem like it right now. When, when Jesus was talking about the weary and burdened, he was talking about John. And, and Jesus wasn't exactly dominating the polls either. <laughs> At the time that Jesus says this, the, the villages where he had been preaching the most sermons and performing the more, most miracles, they were, they were showing the door to Jesus and all of his talk about repentance. The wise, the wise and the learned. The places where, where Jesus had been doing the most work were the most eager to push him away. When Jesus speaks these words, everything seems to be falling apart for Jesus and people that follow him. But notice what Jesus doesn't say either. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and we can all be anxious and, and terrified together. He's not inviting the down and out to a pity party. He's teaching what rest for your soul looks like. Do not think of the kingdom of God like an elite resort for the wise and the learned. People with baggage need not apply. Now the wise and the learned, those are the people who had been showing Jesus the door and who were holding John in a dungeon. And, and make sure you understand the, the sarcasm in Jesus' voice in, in verse 25, wise and learned. That wasn't Jesus' estimation. That was their own self-appraisal. As far as they were concerned, they had their act together. So Jesus, don't preach your repentance and forgiveness to us. We're just fine, thank you very much. Jesus, you can keep your message out of our synagogues. And John, you can keep your preaching in your dungeon. Don't, don't think of the kingdom of God or this church as an elite resort for the wise and the learned. Think of it, think of it as a nursery. Because what did Jesus say? 
little little children. Think of it as a as a as a rehabilitation center for the weak and the weary. Jesus came for people who can't make it on their own. He came for everyone, but since the wise and, and the learned would have nothing to do with him, he focused instead on, on, on the exhausted and the overwhelmed. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and, and I will give you rest. Do you, do you see why he puts it that way? Come, come to me, and I will give you rest. Because that's not our instinct. Here, here's, here's my observation after 19 years of pastor experience and 46 years of personal experience. When a, when a person is, is burdened by guilt or overwhelmed by the responsibilities and trials of life, they tend to either turn inward or try to escape. Turning inward, that usually involves some kind of isolation. You, you, you turn in on yourself, you make yourself into an island, you burn all the bridges, and then you seek solace in your aloneness. And then trying to escape that can take any number of, of forms, um, none of them solutions, all of them temporary. Just trying to push away reality. You, you can use loud music or chemicals or, or spending all your time with, with anybody or exercising your way into not being able to think about anything else. Whatever it takes to just crowd out reality. But no surprise. Isolation does not provide relief. And temporary escape is just that. Temporary. Non-solutions, they only make the problem worse. That's why Jesus says it. Come, come to me. I, I will give you rest. I need to be upfront with you about the, this kind of rest that Jesus promises. This, this isn't the kind of rest where Jesus just takes away every problem you have and everything's perfect and you don't even need Jesus anymore. Now this, this word for rest, this is the word that you would use uh, if you were toiling out in the fields all morning long and then you hear the bell calling everyone in for lunch. Like you need that refreshment in order to keep on going. Otherwise, you won't make it through the day. So maybe think of it this way. That, that, that long and heavy burlap sack that's filled with shame from your past. Jesus doesn't say, get that filth out of my sight. He says, come to me. And when you look up at him, you see that he, well, he's got his own burlap sack. The only difference is his is empty. But then he takes all the bricks out of yours and he puts all of your guilt and your shame into his. And then he slings that over his shoulder and carries it to his cross. That, that bag of temptations and addictions that you're always carrying around with you and, and frequently reaching into. Jesus, he doesn't say, I, I've had enough patience with you. Three strikes, you are more than out. He says, come to me. My spirit that I poured out on you at your baptism, he hasn't left 
He's still with you in this struggle, and I'm still here with my forgiveness when you fall. And then all that, all that, that baggage without the, the bag, the relentless responsibilities and trials that are more than you can juggle. Well, Jesus doesn't wave down at you from heaven and say, good luck. No, he, he says, come to me and learn from me. And, and when you go to him and learn from him, he teaches you that his work for you didn't stop after he died on the cross and rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. That Jesus is in heaven doesn't mean that he's not with you. It means that he's ruling over all things for you. Even when, even when all of the villages were showing Jesus the, the door and John was in a dungeon, even then, all things were committed to Jesus by his Father. And even now, He's still ruling all things, not just ruling for ruling's sake, but for your sake. Come, walk with me, Jesus says. No one who walks with me walks alone. Take my, take my yoke upon you. And just so we're clear, that yoke isn't just like a yet another burden on your shoulders. A, a yoke is a tool that helps you carry your burden. And it's easy and light because you're not carrying it alone. Jesus is carrying it with you. So if, if, if we were to tape a sign to the, to the front door, and I don't know, maybe we should. What, what, what should it say? Definitely not no baggage allowed. How about this? I was actually thinking about this in the new sanctuary. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's a lot of words to put on a sign. But but what could you cut out without it losing its essence? I, I would actually propose that we'd add two words to it. Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Because who's saying it makes all the difference. It's, it's not just some pastor in a pulpit making promises that he can't keep. It's not a a lovely yet far from perfect congregation uh, advertising to everybody else, we're what you need because we're so awesome. Jesus says it. The Savior of all, the God of all, the servant of all. And when Jesus speaks, that's never just talk, that's power. Come to me. Jesus says to the weary and the burdened, where are you going to go to find them? In the Bible, where he speaks to you with power? In your baptism, where he laid his claim on you and declared you his child? At his, at his supper? where he gives you his body and blood that he gave for the world on the cross and says, this is for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Come to Jesus and, and learn from him and you will find rest for your souls. And, and when you come to, to this place to learn from Jesus, there's something else you'll find too. Other people who have baggage just like you. Other people who are weary and burdened just like you. Little children to whom 
Jesus has revealed his rest just as he has to you. People that God will use to, to give you the encouragement and the refreshment that you need as you walk that, that long and winding road that leads, to, that leads to eternal life where there is no more of any of that stuff. And those people, well, they're not just people either. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Your family. Amen.